Today I'm outside watching traffic go past on a road that's outside of our building. I've often wondered, are these cars obeying the speed limit? So we've decided to set up a little speed trap. Now this area actually has two speed limits. The first is when students are either arriving or departing, and that would be 15 miles an hour. And at the rest of the time, the speed limit is clearly posted at 35 miles an hour. Now the first decision to make about this experiment is to decide how far to put those reference lines on the road. Now to figure that out, we need to do a little bit of math. Now our calculations start by changing miles an hour into feet per second. We know that one mile an hour is equal to 5,280 feet per hour. If I take that number divided by 60, that's going to give me 88 feet per minute. If I divide it by 60 again, that's going to give me 1.46 repeating feet per second. Now when we multiply this by 35 miles an hour, that would give us a distance of 51.3 feet. Now if I were to use 51.3 feet as our reference lines, it would take one second for the car to get from one side to the other at 35 miles an hour. Now one second is just too hard to be accurate using a stopwatch. So what I need is a longer distance that's going to give us a little bit more accuracy. So we're simply going to take that distance and multiply it by 3. Now with that distance set at 154 feet, that means it'll take 3 seconds for a car to get from one line to the other. Now any car that does it in less than 3 seconds means that that car is speeding. And any car that's over 3 seconds, well that means that they were under the speed limit. Our reference lines are set up, now it's time to go collect some data. Our observation point is about 100 feet from the road. And even with large groups, it doesn't seem to have much effect on the speed of the traffic. We measure all types of vehicles. And we measure in both directions, going north and south. I use different classes throughout the day to see if time makes any difference on the speed of the cars. We collect the data a couple different ways. Either I had students calculate the exact speeds or I had them group the cars according to the time to the nearest tenth of a second. Students then graph the results to get a clear picture of what's going on. And typically we find about 60% or more of the cars in front of our school are over the speed limit. The final stage of this investigation was to write letters to the local police department and inform them of our findings. 